Hi everyone, Nikos Pafidis here from the Junior Senior School in Cyprus. Sunny Cyprus, usually a little bit cloudy today. Back with another video and this one's a really nice little video for educators. It's all about the new feature of attendance in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, instead of talking about it too much, I'm going to show you very quickly where it is, how you can use it, but keep in mind that enabling this feature and getting this feature active through your scheduled meetings can be a little bit tricky so i'm going to cover all of these in this tutorial so let's see what it is first of all you can see here i've got two meetings scheduled you're going to see why in a second i'm going to use this one here so i'm just going to double click on this to open up my meeting details and i can see here where i can go and change the details the time and this that the other but have a look at the top you see you've got the meeting notes whiteboard and now i've got a new one here called attendance fantastic little feature what does it do have a look after a meeting if you have scheduled a meeting for your team your class then it will record the start time the end time of that meeting the duration of that meeting but it also gives you a list of everyone who attended that meeting now it gives you the organizer at the top and all the attendees at the bottom the the wonderful thing about this is this so let's say a student connects to the meeting is disconnected and then reconnects again and this happens multiple times well the time that it displays here for example in meeting duration is the sum of the entire time that student was in the meeting so let's say you joined in for five minutes and then two minutes and this sum will be for seven minutes okay it gives you a lot of information here really nice information and here's a key point very important once you've used this link for the meeting and then the meeting ends the information for that meeting can be found in the meeting link so by double clicking on this link here in this entry I can go to attendance and see that information there however if I use this meeting in my calendar again let's say my lesson was yesterday and let's say today I'm going to use the same link to start a meeting again this information which we see on this page will be for the latest meeting in other words today's meeting so the information from yesterday's meeting will be gone it will show me the participants of today's meeting so keep that in mind if you're using the same link to start meetings or your lessons again and again that information valuable information you're going to lose about attendance so it's always good to schedule a new meeting for the next lesson okay okay so I've shown you how um, what attendance does where you can find it now I'm going to show you how you can actually schedule your meetings so that the attendance feature is there okay so from my calendar here you can see I've got these two meetings they're exactly the same the reason why is this if I try to open this meeting and see the details you can see there's no attendance feature here there's no whiteboard and there's no meeting notes okay and now I'm going to show you why now I've explained this in another video before but just to keep this video complete I'm going to show you again very quickly so first of all I'll show you how uh, educators will normally create a meeting and schedule it for their class so one way is from the calendar so if I was to click here I would then add the title for example test uh, one actually I'm going to call this test eight because I've made the test one before and here you would put the channel for example you would type your teacher there it is teacher training i'm going to put it in the teacher training channel in the general section and if you want to schedule this so it repeats again on a weekly basis you can i'm not going to show this in this video and uh, that's it you will simply click send and that will create for you there it is there the meeting i will also apply it so let me just refresh this i'm just going to click on teams and go back to my calendar there it is there now the problem with this is there's no attendance there's no whiteboard there's no meeting options the other way that we can schedule meetings i've seen educators use this a lot is from the team itself they go to the general channel they go up here top right corner and they go schedule a meeting and it says like exactly the same so i'm just going to put this test b just so you can see again because i've started this um tried to schedule this from the team itself it's added the team and the channel automatically if i click on send that's it it should schedule it it will put it in my calendar so if i go to my calendar i've also got test b but have a look again there is no attendance no meeting notes no whiteboard okay so how do we actually get these options at the top well you need to know the email address 
of your meeting. So let me just cancel these. Let's just get rid of those, get rid of that. I've actually deleted the, the one I had before. doesn't matter. We, we, we It served its purpose for this video. So I'm just going to cancel that one as well. Okay, so to be able to schedule the meeting so you get the attendance link at the top, you need to know the email address of your team. Now, the easiest way to do this is to open your team in the SharePoint. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Going through your 365 portal. So from your 365 portal, you can go to SharePoint, not Sway, I always get these two confused. So I'm going to go to SharePoint and you're going to find your team. Now here's my team here, teacher trainee. You can actually search for it as well. Now if I click on this, it opens the SharePoint of my team. Now here's the name of my team. Can you see it's actually a link? If I rest my mouse over that, I can actually send an email or I can simply click on it and then choose send email. And there you go. That's the email address that you want. You need to have that email address. So I can copy that. The other, now, if you've got, uh, just a quick note, if like your school, like my school, we, you've changed your primary domain. So we, we did have the junior and senior school. Um, we've actually got a new domain now, tjss.ac.cy. Uh, essentially, all teams generated after you've made that change will have a different name. So you can see this one here had the, the junior school domain when it was a primary domain. This one, which I've changed recently, if we have a look, click on it to open it. And if I now just click on send email, you can see to send an email to this particular team, I need this domain. So the easiest way to find the correct name for your team, the correct email address for your team, is to actually open it from the SharePoint site. So I'm just going to do a quick copy of this one. So I'm just going to go to the send email. I'm going to copy that. There you go. Okay. Now, the good thing with this email address, if you were to send an email right now with a subject, you want to actually send an email to all the members of that team. So if you want to email your students so they get an email, not a notification, you can use that email address to contact all the members of that team. Okay, so how do we create a scheduled meeting which can recur on a weekly basis and we have all those wonderful features as well, including attendance? Well, you need to do it from the Outlook application. Or you can also do it from Outlook, the web. Okay, so I'm going to use my application here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my calendar. I'm already in my calendar. I'm going to schedule a new meeting. So I'm just going to double click here. I'm going to call this test C. Okay. And now what I want to do, at the top here, I want to make this a Teams meeting. And that's going to automatically add this link, which is going to be uh, what the students are going to use to join the meeting. And in the required field, I need to add the email address of that team. Okay, that's essentially all you have to do. By applying the correct email address of your team, it will now schedule the meeting for everybody who's a member of that team. So if you want to, again, if you want this to be reoccurring, make it reoccurring and simply send it. And that's all you have to do. So I'm just going to click on send. And you can see it's scheduled it here automatically for me on my calendar and outlook. And now I'm going to go to my teams and I should see it in my teams. And I will also see it in the teams of the students. So I've got a student account already in that setup here. So we can have a look at that as well. So I'm going to go here where I am on my teams. I'm going to do a quick refresh. I'm going to click away and then click back again and there it is there and have a look now when I double click on this look at that attendance whiteboard and meeting notes so perfect this will work absolutely fantastic um, I'm going to open up the a student account which I've got open here a test account so you can actually see that meeting being scheduled so I'm just going to do a quick refresh There it is. So there's my meeting. So it does actually schedule the meeting for all the members in the team by using the calendar from Outlook. And students will very easily be able to come here, double click and join that meeting very easily. OK, so that's how we can actually schedule our meetings as organizers so that our students 
and all the members will actually be able to see that meeting organized in the calendar but at the same time we get all these fabulous features which are available to us from Microsoft Teams okay the next part of this video is going to be about how to get this enabled on your platform now by default this is not enabled you would need the IT admin or your IT department to actually enable this feature so if you're not an IT admin you can have a look at the video see how it's done but you can also forward this video and send it to the IT department if they don't know how to enable it just so they can see how they can enable it and allow anybody who when they organize a meeting to have this feature at the top okay unfortunately you're not able to enable this feature from the teams admin portal so from here from the teams admin center here you're not going to be able to enable the team for any of your policies so if you were to go and where you would want to go to the global policies it's not part of this so you can't enable it to enable the feature for the attendance you're going to need to use powershell now i'm not a powershell guru but i have worked with powershell a little bit and i am still learning so i'm going to click on my windows icon here i'm going to search for powershell so powershell and you're going to here i'm going to use this one here powershell i'm going to use uh powershell the windows app you can use the IC as well it's entirely up to you I'm going to right click on this to make sure it runs in admin mode okay and I'm just going to drag that up here I'll just switch window there we go okay now the commands you're going to need are these ones here you're going to need to first of all install the module for Microsoft Teams and once you've done that you're going to need to connect to it now if you've used PowerShell before you've already installed the Teams module you don't have to you may want to update I've just updated my one so I'm just going I'm going to add these commands in the description below as well so first of all I'm going to select this I'm going to copy that and I'm going to simply paste it there okay now when I press enter it's going to install uh, the module it's not actually going to show anything on my one because the module is already installed and it's updated if your module is out of date then you can choose to use the force command so you can actually put dash force and that will force um, the module to actually run the update I don't want to do that I've already done that okay the next command that you're going to need is to connect to Microsoft Teams um, to that module so I'm just going to oops, just right click on there okay this is going to pop up the window for you to log in with your administrator account and I'm hoping if you are the admin you do have two-factor authentication enabled so let me just okay okay so now once the prompt comes up that means I've connected there you go I'm actually connected with my account there it is and now all I have to do is run the following command now this command here as you can see it actually says you're going to use the set command it is the command for the team's meeting policy and then the identity is global so I'm going to apply this for the for teams meetings policies I'm going to allow it to the group global if you don't want everybody to have access to the attendance at the top in others when we say everybody we mean uh, anybody who actually organizes a meeting which is only available available for the organizers but if you don't want all of your educators or all of your staff to be able to have access to that then you can actually apply you can actually create a new group in your policies here so where you go to meeting policy you can actually make a new group and apply it to that instead so I'm going to apply it to global and then the property you want is this one here allow engagement report enabled so let's just copy all of this and I'm going to right click here so it pastes it and press enter now as soon as I get the prompt there we go it means it has actually applied this I like checking to make sure it has actually applied it so I can see that it's enabled so I've got this command here 
and this will actually give you a list of all the policies of all the settings you've got for the meeting policy so here we go and I run that and this is all the different groups that I've got so I want to go to the top where I've got the global one there it is this is for global uh, down here this is for uh, another one the allow NDI so on and so forth so for this one here in other words the group global that means everybody it has and if we have a look here carefully allow engagement report that's the one there and you can see that one there is enabled so that's it now all of the users of your uh, 365 portal when they actually organize a meeting or schedule a meeting as organizers they will have the tab at the top okay if you like this video make sure you click like and if you don't want to miss any other videos i create then make sure you subscribe see you in the next video